Hi, my name is Peter Anders. I'm a professor at Edinburgh Napier University. This is my lecture series on the evolution of complex systems. This is lecture 14, cells and multicellular organism. This is part two of lecture 14. Now, continuing the previous uh, lecture, uh, we look at how or, uh, multicellular organisms can be seen as composite systems of units of the cell system. Uh, we will look at how the adaptation of the cell system in the context of the organism works, and we will also consider the trade-offs of single cells uh, and organism-based cells. So, uh, to uh, start with, um, let's just reconsider how we see cells. So, we see the cell system as the system of all molecular interactions that uh, follow the rules of the cell system. And this is the sum of all molecular interactions across all instances of the cell system. And the instances of the cell system are the unit systems. These are the single cells that exist in a finite space and time. However, overall, the cell system exists across space and time, potentially infinitely, through the individual instances of the cell system. And we said that the uh, individual instances of the cell system, the individual cells, are defined by uh, this coherent structure constraints which uh, define the cell membrane and possible cell wall and uh, cell matrix around the cell membrane. Now, these individual cells interact through sequences of molecular interactions. So, for example, they release molecules. Those molecules may be uptaken by other cells, triggering further molecular interactions uh, among these other cells. So you can see, for example, cases of bacteria in bacterial mats, where the interaction between bacteria through the release of molecules uh, sets how the whole bacterial mat behaves. Now, uh, the, um, these unit cells, the unit systems, the individual cells, are much more likely to interact meaningfully if they belong to the same cell system. Now, there are examples of the opposite, uh, lichens, for example, where uh, different kinds of cells, uh, fungi and uh, bacteria, uh, may interact. However, in most of the cases, uh, it is cells belonging to the same cell system are the ones that interact and form uh, systems of interactions between individual cells. Now, these systems of interactions have their own referencing and continuation rules, and the, the system that is emerging from these uh, interactions between cells is the system of the multicellular organism, which is a system of the interactions between cells. Now, Let's have a look at how these uh, organisms work uh, and focus on, on this particular aspect of how they are seen as uh, systems built out of interactions of unit systems of another system, which is the cell system. So if you consider optional organisms, which exist only in certain circumstances, uh, for example, there are the slime molds where the cells can exist independently, however, if they are under constraints by the environment because there is not enough uh, nutrient available, then they may form a slug and then turn into stalk and a fruiting body. Uh, or bacterial mats or filamentous bacteria may form regular interactions between their cells, uh, in particular if there is some environmental constraints that triggers the formation of these optional organisms. So in both cases, what you see is that there is an, a large number of interactions between the cells which follow certain uh, rules of these interactions, where the interactions are implemented by uh, interactions of proteins, either released and uptaken, or displayed on the cell membrane of these uh, uh, individual cells. Now, these cells in uh, these optional organisms are such that they may exist in the richest, so they can exist in sufficiently uh, supportive uh, environments, and they can also dissociate from the aggregate optional organism, uh, and then they exist as an individual cell. However, in 
certain stages and the cells may differentiate to an extent where they can no long, longer detach uh, from the organism. So for example, uh, if you look at the stalk cells, in the case of the slime molds, they can no longer dissociate, uh, on the, and only those can dissociate with specialized for this purpose, like the spores in the case of stalk cells, in the case of slime molds, not the stalk cells. So what you see there is that in those cases, the, uh, the instances of the innate system, cell so cell system, can form these optional organisms, but do not necessarily have to exist in the context of these organisms. Now, if you look at uh, you know, permanent multicellular organisms, um, you see is that the cells in these organisms differentiate into a number of cell types of the abstract cell system. And the, the, uh, this abstract cell system expands through the multiplication of their unit systems of the cells. Now, in some cases, uh, the some cells, uh, uh, some instances of the cell system, retain their ability to divide and multiply, but not necessarily all of them, or in some cases, all of them have that. Um, now, um, the, the ability to divide and generate new cell instances uh, quite often is restricted to certain kinds of differentiated cells, uh, which can generate these new cells by others can. In some uh, context, um, some of these cells can, which can generate new cells, can generate only uh, certain kinds of differentiated versions of the cell system. So for example, um, you have stem cells in all tissues, but the tissue-specific stem cells of the organism can generate only cells uh, that become mem uh, cells within that particular tissue, be that uh, epithelial or muscle tissue or other kinds of tissues uh, in the organism, in this case, in the animal. So the organism is formed of all these uh, interactions between the cells, uh, and it includes uh, many uh, interactions which are specific uh, for uh, the particular differentiation of the cells in the various kinds of tissues of, of the organism. So the tissues are these uh, specialist versions uh, of the cells, uh, cells belonging to certain tissues which uh, specialize and differentiate accordingly to deliver some functionality in the context of the organism. Now, the cell differentiation, as we already discussed in the previous lecture, happens by selecting a certain part of the genome that is active in addition to the kind of general purpose housekeeping parts of the genome. This happens by selecting specific transcription factors um, or activation patterns of transcription factors and enhancers and promoters at the level of the activation of the genome. And depending on what are these particular uh, transcription factors or activation patterns of transcription, on that depends how the cell differentiate, what part of the genome is active in addition to the general housekeeping part of the genome. And as a result, these cells produce uh, the differentiation-specific proteins, the differentiation-specific molecular interactions, and the differentiation-specific cellular behaviors in the context of the organism, including all the differentiation-specific interactions with other cells. Now, um, the, uh, the survivor of these cells, of the unit systems of the cell system, depends on the generation of appropriate interactions with other cells. So if these appropriate interactions are generated, then as a result of these, the cells uh, receive the appropriate growth factors, survival factors, and all the different kinds of proteins which help the cell to, uh, to survive. Uh, by regenerating its uh, molecular interactions that are required to the maintenance of the cell. However, uh, if the cells uh, do not uh, produce right interactions, or if they are selected 
uh, to not survive in the context of the organism, the apoptotic process is triggered uh, in, in these cells. The apoptosis is the trigger cell death process where the lack of survival factors, the lack of growth factors, triggers the activation of molecular interactions within the cell, which ultimately destroy the cell, uh, terminating uh, the existence of this uh, unit system of the cell system. So the unit systems of the cell, of the abstract cell system, uh, which forms an organism, uh, through the interactions of these unit systems are such that they cannot survive outside of their interaction uh, engagement with other cells within the organism, with the exception of uh, possibly other reproductive cells. But most other cells, which are differentiated in other ways, they can survive only in the context uh, of, of the uh, organism by living in the environment provided by the organism. So the abstract cell system adapts to the organismal environment by uh, a number of mechanisms, for example, use of transposons, viruses, capturing DNA from other cells, the partial duplication of the, uh, the chromosomes, mutations, crossover and selection, and so on. So there are a number of mechanisms which um, help the cell to change its genome and adapt in this way uh, to the, uh, the organismal environment uh, of the cell system. And in this way, the DNA of the cell system, the memory system of the cell system expands, incorporating these adaptations, which are used to deliver the kind of new kinds of differentiations or new specializations of the abstract cell system in the context of the organism. So this process is a very slow process. There are a few examples uh, of this uh, that can be observed in uh, certain animals and plants, um, and generally involve uh, the selection of certain uh, individuals of the organisms which have the right kind of changes in their DNA in the DNA of their cells, such that they can uh, benefit from the slight advantages uh, in the context of their environment. And over a long time, these uh, changes accumulate, and then there are uh, more and larger scale changes in the DNA uh, of the cell system. Now, the organism identity is defined at the level of the organism system. And it is about the uh, checking of the interactions of cells, which are the cell interactions that are correct in the context of the organism's referencing and continuation rules. And this identity checking, that the, the checking that the cells within the organism interact in the right way, um, these require special cell interactions. Now, in the, uh, in the animals, there are the immune cells, uh, which specialize in, in identity checking. Um, in, in plants, there are other ways of checking that uh, there are the proper interactions uh, between cells, um, which involve um, interactions between cells without having specialized cells uh, for this purpose. Um, the, However, in general, what happens is that uh, the identity checking leads to identity enforcement when this is necessary. And the identity enforcement uh, happens, for example, by inducing program cells in some cells, or by phagocytosis in the case of the animals, where some immune cells uh, phagocytes uh, consume other cells which do not behave in accordance with the uh, identity requirements of the organism. Now, one uh, version of this uh, behavior is the kind of cell scale uh, defense of the organism, where the immune uh, response of the organism triggers a large scale cell death, which aims to limit the cellular scale damage, possibly caused by viruses or bacteria. So, for example, in the plants, uh, this is the hypersensitive response where 
a considerable part of the of the plant tissue uh, dies very rapidly by triggered uh, um, cell deaths in order to limit the spread uh, of the viruses or bacterial damage. Or in the case of vertebrates, there is inflammation and the inflammatory response, which uh, helps uh, the immune system to kill a relatively large number of cells, again to limit the spread of infection by viruses or the impact of uh, bacteria uh, on the organism. So, uh, if you look at the um, organism as a system, of course, it needs uh, to expand uh, in addition to its reproduction. So, the, there are a number of ways of expansion uh, for the organism. So, for example, in the case of some plants and fungi, uh, there is addition of new cells, and the organism grows by adding these cells to the organism, but at the same time also some of the cells uh, die at the same time as well. Uh, another way is the budding off of a small-scale organism. For example, this happens in the hydrophase of the jellyfish, where uh, the budding uh, of the organism uh, lets, uh, the crea uh, leads to the creation of a new uh, uh, instance of the organism. Uh, at a small scale, which grows into a full-scale organism. And uh, finally, there is a sexual reproduction of the new organism when there are specialized cells, the gametes, uh, which join together into zygote cell, and then the zygote cell grows into a new organism by generating a very large number of cell instances of the base system, uh, which is the cell system. For, uh, which has the cell instances, uh, the unit cells, uh, which generate the organs up through uh, their um, uh, interactions. Now, in the same way as the cell systems have their unit systems, um, organisms also can have uh, unit systems, and most organisms do have such unit systems. Uh, and these are uh, the um, the, um, the individual organisms uh, or in the, uh, organism instances, which are made of cell interactions, which follow the uh, rules of the organism system, but at the same time there is also uh, a set of coherent boundary structures which constrain these cell interactions, which define the uh, organism individuals. Now in some organisms, um, it is uh, relatively clear. Uh, for example, they have their skin or exoskeleton, which defines the individual organism instance. Uh, but in other uh, cases of organism, it's perhaps less uh, clear how, uh, how this uh, separation between the individuals is defined. Certainly, in most organisms, we do have, and in those organism systems, the organism system expands through its unit systems. Uh, by generating new unit systems. So how these new unit systems are generated, uh, we already noted that they are the gametes. These are specialized cells, special unit systems of this abstract cell system that can lead to the formation of a new organism uh, unit system. Now the, the gametes can trigger the interpenetration of two appropriate gametes, a female and a male, uh, gametes now, to form a new single cell system, which is the zygote uh, cell. And this zygote cell has the ability to produce a very large number of new cells through repeated uh, multiplication and division of these cells. And these new cells form their appropriate interactions, which turns into uh, the formation of a new organism uh, unit system, a new individual. To note here is that many of these cells that are generated through uh, the division uh, the of the cells originating from the zygote uh, end up uh, dying uh, through uh, either apoptosis or some uh, other way like this being discarded by the organism in order to generate the right kind of 
interactions between the cells uh, forming the organism. So a very large number of cells are generated, however, ultimately only some part of these very large number of cells will continue to form the organism. And as the organism exists, at all times cells get discarded and new cells are generated, uh, while at the same time the organism as a whole is maintained uh, while the cells uh, that generate the interactions for the organisms are, are changed because some new cells are generated and some cells uh, die. Now, let's see uh, how uh, is the trade-off between uh, the cells that exist in organisms and cells that exist in, uh, in the form of single cellular uh, organisms. So, in the uh, cell systems which exist, um, with there's unit cells that are not part of a multicellular organisms. They can survive and multiply in their environment without requiring uh, the necessarily the, the presence of uh, units of the same cell system. While uh, cells, which are the base system for an organism, providing the unit systems, for the organisms. In these cell systems, the cells typically can survive only in the environment provided by the organism, with a few uh, exceptions, as we noted already, uh, such as the case of the gamete uh, cells. So in these cases, the interactions with other instances of the cell system is a necessary requirement for the survival of these cells. Now, in the cell systems where the unit cells exist as a single cells without let's say, interacting with other instances of the same uh, kind of cell system, uh, unit cells, the adaptations to environment, uh, the challenges that develop uh, through their DNA, and all the full range of functionality represented with DNA and delivered through a single cell. So, for example, generation of acetylcellulose, uh, motility, release of uh, toxins, organ markers, these all are delivered by uh, the cell, uh, the unit systems of, of the cell system. While in cells which are part of organisms, uh, the cells specialize um, to the delivery of particular functionalities, um, like mobility or secretion, and allow further adaptations of the delivery of these functionalities. So through the air specialization, they allow further expansion on how these adaptations are delivered. And the price that they pay is that they have to exist in the context of the organism. However, they deliver more benefits and more predictive sustainability to the organism by adapting much more to the functionality requirements of that particular functionality. Now, in general, the cells within the organisms are larger than cells that live as single cells. It's not always the case, but overall, in the majority of cases, this applies. And generally, the cells in organisms have uh, much more larger and much more complex genomes than the cells uh, that live as uh, single cells. In particular, they have more regulatory content in, uh, in their genomes. If you look at how organisms are uh, built, they are generally much more densely packed in terms of the number of cells. And they deliver a much more efficient growth for the cell system. So being a cell system that leads to the formation of an organism system benefits the cell system by delivering much more efficient growth for the cell system itself as well. Now, the cells in organism, as we noted, cannot survive outside of the organism, with a few exceptions like gametes and zygotes. Um, by the cells in outside of organisms which or which do not live in organisms can do that. And another uh, aspect of this trade-off is that the cells within the organism may be subject 
of the induced cell death if this benefits the predictive sustainability of the organism system. So there is an impact of the organism onto the cell system in terms of overriding uh, the rationales of the cell system in this particular case when uh, induced cell death is uh, triggered in some cells. Right, so this uh, gives us a kind of overview of the benefits and uh, of being post individual cell and part of the organism. And overall, what you can see is that having a, a cell system living through individual unit cells, which do not require interactions with other unit cells of the same kind, or at least not necessarily very frequently, they can. Uh, generate more easily copy, uh, uh, replicas of the unit cell systems. However, overall, uh, the uh, cell systems which live in the context of the organisms can grow much more and adapt to a wider range of the environments through uh, being part of the organism that they compose through the interactions between the cells. Again, there is a, a, a trade-off and in certain uh, environmental niches, uh, the individual cells um, have more advantages than the cells living in the context of organisms. Now, um, let's have a look at how organisms uh, act upon cells. So how the being part of the organism acts on the uh, cell system. So, the abstract cell system grows many instances of unit system, which compose the organisms through their interactions. Now, this leads to the formation of a localized environment that increases the predictive sustainability of the abstract cell system and, of course, of its unit systems as well. And this favorable localized environment is realized through the interactions that lead to the emergence of the organism. So this is the composite system. So this is where the advantage of forming a composite system comes, that it creates an environment for the individual cells, which is beneficial for the maintenance and the growth of the uh, abstract cell system itself. Now, the participation in, in the organism, of course, leads to the adaptations of the abstract cell systems, as we noted already. As the abstract cell systems uh, instances, the unit systems adapt and adapt further to deliver better their functionality in the context of cell system, these adaptations uh, are expressed in terms of adaptation of the DNA, expansion of the DNA, expansion in particular of the regulatory component of the DNA. So in this way, the abstract cell system adapts to the embedding organisms. So the organism, uh, if you like, the organism system penetrates the abstract cell system by triggering adaptations in the abstract cell system through the participation in the organism. In particular, this adaptation is such that allows the destruction of the cell systems when that is required of the unit cell systems. So it's not the full cell system does not get destroyed, but individual unit instances of the cell system can get destroyed uh, uh, or through the apoptotic process or by describing them uh, in accordance with the needs of the organism system. So effectively what this means is that the cells within the organism are such that they, uh, their memory, their identity is such that it allows these occasional contradictions uh, within the cell system. And also, the cell system adapts such that it can form these specialized cells, like the gametes and the zygote, which are the root of the generation of new organism instances. Now, the organism, of course, adapts to its environment as well, and it develops new specialized versions of its uh, component systems, uh, the unit systems in the cells. And this adaptation of the organism drives further adaptations of the base system, of the uh, abstract cell system. The, um, one particular adaptation of this kind is the adaptation of the identity checking and the forcing 
communications, or the rather the uh, implementation of this through the adaptation of instances of the cell system, uh, which in the case of uh, animals leads to the development of immune cells, and in case of other organisms, leads to the development of certain specialized communications between cells, the interaction between cells, which support identity checking and identity enforcement within the organism. Of course, there are also many other kinds of specialized versions of cell, syst uh, cell system uh, instances, which form the tissues and functional components of the organism. So, for example, the nervous system or the uh, muscle system uh, within uh, the organism. So, what we see here is that uh, being in the organism uh, or providing the base for the organism uh, by providing the cell system instances, exposes the cell system to impact uh, by the organism, and those impacts drive the adaptation of the cell system itself. So, we reviewed here uh, how the organism is seen as the system of interactions of cells, where we focused on the role of uh, on the cells seen as unit systems of the abstract cell system and on the impact in both phase of, of how uh, unit systems and the cell system impacts organism, how being in an organism impacts uh, the unit system uh, by triggering adaptations uh, in it. So, to summarize, we looked at the unit system of abstract cell systems. See, these are the individual cells of the cell system. Uh, we looked at how they work in the organism. First, we consider kind of simpler optional organisms where the cells may dissociate and may have a separate life. And then we consider cells in the context of uh, organisms as composite systems. And we saw that in those cases where the organism is such that the cells necessarily need to participate in the organism, then the cells need to have that particular environment that is provided by the interaction with other cells. And then we discussed about the cell system adaptation that is due to the participation in the organism, and we consider the trade-offs between being uh, a single cell-based uh, cell system or a cell system which provides unit cells uh, or unit systems that act as cells within an organism. And we also discussed how we get from the cells to the organism and how this adaptation of the cells in the context of the organism impacts the cell system. Finally, let's see a few questions. Uh, first, are the cells of an organism separate systems or a single system? So, what we said is that the cells in an organism are instances of an abstract cell system, and in that way, the cells of the organism are a representative of a single system, which is the cell system for which these cells serve as unit systems. Next, are the interactions between bacterial cells and intestinal cells part of the animal organism? So as you know, in the intestine there are many bacteria which interact with the intestinal cells. However, these interactions between intestinal cells and bacterial cells are not part of the animal organism because they do not follow the uh, interaction rules between uh, uh, the cells of the uh, animal organism. Next, is program cell that's meaningful from the perspective of the cell system? And what we said is that a program cell that leads to the death of the individual instance of the cell system, where the cell system it is adapted to allow this uh, occasional contradictory uh, application of the rules of the cell, uh, cell system, where uh, the, the self-destruction of the cell uh, is allowed to proceed, it is not blocked, uh, let's say, by survival factors. Now, in this context, the, the death of the cell is not meaningful from the perspective of the cell system uh, in, in principle. However, in the context of the organism, it is meaningful, and in the context of the organism, 
adapted cell system, the programmed cell death, uh, fits into the cell system definition as well. The, the, the definition of, of the identity of the cell system, of what is allowed and what is not. Finally, uh, do the selection pressures on the organism system translate into selection pressures on the cell system, providing the unit systems for the organism? And the answer is yes, although the way how this translation happens is not fully clear. However, what is clear is that there are gradual adaptations of the cells, of the DNA in the cells, which are triggered by uh, the adaptations of the organism and by triggered by the environmental constraints on the organism. And these adaptations accumulate and then they turn into much larger scale uh, uh, selection, uh, uh, much larger scale uh, changes in the definition of the cell system. So the selection pressures on the organism ultimately do translate into selection pressures on the cell system. Thank you.